Hello everyone! In this video, I'll be showing the process I used to make this 28-inch parabolic mirror. These can be used for lots of solar applications like heating and cooking, and I was also curious to try out a mirror like this to build a DIY telescope. Optically, my design isn't quite up to telescope standards yet, but I may get there. The process to make these mirrors involves using compressed air to form a sheet of aluminized mylar, commonly sold as space blankets, into a parabola. This is accomplished by first securing the mylar to a flat, airtight surface, where it is then pressurized from below like a giant cell of bubble wrap. With a prototype in my mind, the first part of this project I start work on is the surface I'll use to inflate the mylar. I decided to try this 1 half inch PVC sheet as my material. Air won't pass through it, and it's perfectly flat, so it should work well as a base plate to form my mirrors on. For this project to work, I need an air injection port in the center of my square plate. The first step for that is to mount a bicycle tire valve into a small scrap left over from what I trimmed off. I then drill quite a large hole into the center of my base plate. With some PVC cement, the scrap that I mounted the tire valve in is attached with the valve stem facing outward. Once I flip over the plate, you can see why I've done things this way. The valve is sunk below the surface, and I won't have to worry about it getting in the way. I only need to complete one more step here, and that is to sketch out a circle of the same diameter as the mirror I'd like to create. With some sandpaper, I'll also rough up the surface along the outside border, as I'll later be applying glue using the circle as a guide. That's it for the forming plate, it's now time to take a look at the mylar sheets. Like I said before, aluminized mylar is sold as space blankets, and they come folded up into a tiny package. Before this material can be used to make a mirror, it first needs to have as many of the wrinkles taken out of it as possible. A simple wood frame in the shape of a square and just larger in diameter than my PVC plate should work nicely to stretch out the mylar. The easiest way I found to temporarily bond the plastic sheet with the wood was with a coat of spray adhesive. I worked on one side at a time, attaching the mylar to the top side of the frame, then flipping it over I pulled it tight to take out the wrinkles running parallel with the ground. By repeating the process on the left and right side, I was able to also pull out the wrinkles that ran vertical. I could get this tighter, but this result should be adequate. The baseboard is prepared, and now so is the mylar, so it's time to see if my method will work. From some tests I did earlier, I found that epoxy is the best adhesive for adhering mylar to PVC, so I'll carefully spread a layer around the outline of the circle. The mylar is then lowered on top and pressed into the adhesive to get a good seal. To provide air pressure, all it takes is a bicycle pump. Though I tried this small one first, I later switched to a larger one that I could use without being under the table. As soon as the epoxy has been given sufficient time to cure, I can begin inflating the mirror. I'm not sure how far I can push this mylar before it pops, but fortunately it forms a parabolic shape almost immediately. What I haven't talked about yet is how I plan to hold the mirror in this shape after it's been removed from the base plate. My first test was to cover the mylar in spray foam. When it hardened, I was hoping it would have stuck to the mylar, holding the curve in place. This resulted in about the saddest excuse for a parabolic mirror that has ever existed. Fortunately, it only takes a few minutes to scrape off the base plate and try again. After inflating this second sheet of mylar for another attempt, I decided to try molding the mirror with fiberglass. Watching the resin flow over such a smooth curve was pretty cool to see. Once it was spread evenly, I lowered the first sheet of fiberglass on top. I noticed at this point I had a small leak, so until the fiberglass cures, I'll have to occasionally add more air. In the meantime, I added two more layers, and to accelerate the cure time, I heated the mirror with a hair dryer. The mirror I made for my first attempt using the spray foam was damaged when I simply tore it off the plate, 
So for this one, I'll cut the mirror off using an angle grinder. Finally, I get to see the result. Once cleaned up, the reflectiveness is actually very good. The fiberglass is just a little too flexible and wants to curl up like a taco shell. If it's pressed against a flat surface, it still holds the parabolic shape. I just need something to keep it there. I found this plastic landscaping trim that seemed like it would work well for this purpose. I quickly shaped it into a ring and held it together with nuts and bolts. The ring was then placed on top of my mirror with a weight holding it firmly against my workbench. Some caulk secures the ring in place and I'll just need to wait for it to dry to see how well it works. And here is the final result. Not too bad for being made from a $1 space blanket.